हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट सोनेट एंड एस डी एच सोनेट इज सिंक्रोनस ऑप्टिकल नेटवर्क एस डी एच इज सिंक्रोनस डिजिटल हर आर की सोनेट वॉज डिस्कवर्ड इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका बाय बेलकॉर लैब्स एंड इट वॉज स्टैंडर्डाइज बाय ए एन एस आई राइट अमेरिकन नेशनल स्टैंडर्ड इंस्टीट्यूट सो नाउ एस डी एच एस डी एच वी ऑल नो इट्स सिंक्रोनस डिजिटल हर आर की एंड इट वॉज फर्स्ट यूज इन ई यू एंड जपैन एंड देन इट वॉज यूज इन द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एज वेल सो नाउ सो नेट एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सिंक्रोनस ऑप्टिकल नेटवर्क यूज इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका एस डी एच सिंक्रोनस डिजिटल हर आर की यूज इन रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड so it was using the principle of time division multiplexing right with the help of time division multiplexing we were sending the signals from the transmitters to the receivers right so the basic principle that is used in sonet and sdh is the tdm time division multiplexing why the need of sonet or sdh arise we had the different equipments from the different vendors now we need to standardize these equipments and for that we require some standardized thing right sonet is the standardized mechanism by which we can combine the transmission equipments from the different vendors so if i want to interconnect fiber optic transmission equipment from various vendors through multiple owner trunking network i can use the sonet as i already told you it was proposed by belcor labs and standard by ansi american national standard institute right so now coming to the designing of the sonet how we can design the sonet we are using the time division multiplexing over here so obviously clock is required and we are using a single clock for timing synchronization and for the operation of the equipments as well all equipments can be operated with the help of the single clock right with the help of the timing synchronization right so only a single clock would be there it's a synchronized system we all know what is the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous systems the asynchronous systems will not be using any clock so here we are doing the standardization as i told you the standardization was needed for the different transmitting systems by different vendors right so during designing we are trying to standardize right after that we have the different mechanisms by which we can carry signal from incompatible tributary system so here even if i have incompatible tributary system the sonet or sdh can carry signals now here we will be having the multiplex transport mechanisms so i will be using obviously the multiplexers as well as the demultiplexers so now these are used in the atms and bisdn systems so atm is asynchronous transfer mode right and we have talked about the isdn networks as well so it is used in both atm as well as isdn networks and we have already talked about it it is used in the tdm systems so now coming to the various components as i told you we require the multiplexing and the demultiplexing of the signals so obviously mux and demux would be required we require a clock as well so after that i require the add drop multiplexers right if i want to drop some signals if i want to add some signals during the propagation of the signal i will be using the add drop multiplexers then i can use the regenerators the regenerators are used to remove the noise to amplify the signal and the regenerators are bidirectional and used at the data link layer right it is used to remove the noise then after that we have the synchronous transport signal so the synchronous transport signal is a multiplexer which is connected to the clock so sts multiplexer is having both mux as well as demux 
It is called STS multiplexer, but here inside it we will be having MUX as well as DMUX. MUX is used for input and DMUX will be used for the output. So you can see the structure. Here we have various terminals which are represented as transmitter or the receiver. So it is bi-directional circuit. So at any of the terminal, I can have the transmitter or I can have the receiver. Now we will be having the STS MUX or DMUX, right? We have talked about the synchronous transport signal multiplexer. So here we will be having MUX as well as DMUX. If it is used as a transmitter, we will be using the MUX over here. If it is used as a receiver, we will be using the DMUX over here. After that, we have the optical fiber. The optical fiber will be of very long duration, right? So now the connection between the two equipments is the section right so a longer connection after the regenerator we have the optical add drop network to add or to remove some of the wavelengths then this connection is the link and then the overall connection the end to end connection is the path right from the terminals to the terminals connection is the path Right? So section is the connection between the two equipments and the link is the longer connection between the multiple segments. Right here we have the STS multiplexer and we have the OADM. After that again we can use the regenerator if required and then we can use the STS MUX or DMUX again. Right? And here we will be having the terminals and terminals. Right? So this is the structure of the frame which we are using to send the information, right? So if I need to send the information, I will be using this frame. So this frame contains nine rows. We have nine rows over here, right? And it has 90 bytes. So we will be having 90 columns. So 90 byte means 90 columns, right? So this is a frame. In the frame, the first three columns are called the transport overhead, right? So the first three columns transport overhead. In the transport overhead, the first three rows are called the section overhead and the last six rows are called the line overhead, right? So now the transport overhead is divided into section overhead and line overhead. The rest of the bytes so these are the 87 bytes right so these are containing the information payload and which is which is also known as synchronous payload envelope this full structure is called the synchronous payload envelope right so now here you can see we have total this transport overhead is called the admin overhead Admin overhead is divided into section overhead and line overhead. In the section overhead, we will be having 3 into 3 is equal to 9 bytes, right? 3 rows and 3 columns. So, overall I have 9 bytes in the section overhead and it is used for the framing, for error monitoring or for management, right? I hope you understood what is section overhead and what is the overall work of the section overhead. Right, after that we have the line overhead. The rest of the six rows and the three columns in the admin overhead is the line overhead. So line overhead will be having overall three into six bytes which is 18 bytes. We know one byte will contain how many bits? One byte contain eight bits. Right, we know this information. So the line overhead will contain 3 into 6 bytes that is 18 bytes, right? If I want to know the bits, I can multiply both of them by 8, right? So it is used for the synchronization, for multiplexing operation, for the protection of the switching. So I hope you understood what is section overhead, what is line overhead. Then this is the information payload which is used to store the actual information or the actual message. So now this is the frame period. The period for one frame is 125 microsecond. Right. So the frame period is 125 microsecond and the data rate. Data rate would be 
how many data we are having we have nine rows and 87 columns right so data is present in this information payload only we have the for the information payload we have nine rows and we have 87 columns right so total number of bytes would be 87 into 9 these are bytes now if i multiply it with it i will be getting bits and if i divide it by time i will be getting the data rate so data rate is coming out to be nearly equal to 50.122 mbps which is a good enough data rate so this is the reason of the popularity of sonnet right so i hope you understood this so this is the data rate for sonnet or sdh1 or i can call it as sdh1 now sonnet is the multiplication of sdh with 3 so we can have sdh1 sdh3 then sdh6 so now the sdh1 will be having the speed 50.122 if i have the sdhn i am multiplying it with i have sdh 3 let's suppose I will be having the data rate of 3 into 50.122 for SDHN we will be having the data rate of N into 50.122 Mbps right so this is how we can increase the speed so now here this is the sonnet ring the sonnet ring is used for the actual communication purpose how we have used the sonnet for the communication so let's suppose if i have to do the communication from delhi to mumbai so how i can do with the help of this structure in this structure we will be having various add drop network right so we will be having here these are the terminals which could be transmitter or the receiver this is also the transmitter or the receiver this is also transmitter or the receiver this is also transmitter or the receiver right so then after that we will be having the optical add drop network and this is how we can have the bi-directional connection so the signal can be sent from this transmitter to this receiver and from this transmitter to this receiver as well so these are the actual rings or actual connections so the actual connections are used to send the signal from one transmitter to another receiver right then these are some of the lines which we are using as a protection connection on failure of actual connection the prote protection connection will be working and this is how we will be getting the evergreen connection with the help of sonnet and we are using the ring structure so that the disturbances or delays would be not there so if this transmitter has to connect to this receiver as well as this receiver so it can use this path or it can use this path also simultaneously it does not has to wait for this transmission to occur then only he can send the signal to this receiver right so it can send the two signals in the two directions simultaneously and this is the reason we are using the ring structure right so now coming to the applications of the sonnet sonnet as i already told you it is used in the atm and then it is used in the t1 and t3 cells and then it is used to increase the bandwidth on demand if i want to increase the bandwidth i can use the sonnet structure it is used in the isdn and bisdn network connections and then it can be used in the carrier lines as well as the cable tv network so i hope you understood each and everything that i discussed about the sonnet and sdh if you have still any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and also give me your feedback thank you so much